I think it's an excellent initiative because as someone of uh, Caribbean heritage, whose mum uh, was a psychiatric nurse, whose father, well, whose stepdad was an um, Italian kitchen porter, um, I had never thought that I would be a person who would have their name on the spine of books. So I wish you all well with your submissions. And I just thought I might share some tips with you, because as well as writing books, I've been a judge on several book awards, including the sort of 2020 Costa, the uh, 2019 um, BBC uh, New Writers Awards, I think the Scottish Book Trust Emerging Awards and, and several others. So I've read many submissions and, and many books. So I hope that this will help you with your submission and good luck. So there's five things I just want you to, to, to sort of think about, about uh, kind of almost like anti-tips, if that's a thing. So firstly, you know, we're quite often told we need to be right there in the action. But number one, action can mean anything. So yes, it could be a chase or a fight or an argument, but also action can be a moment of tenderness. It can be a reflection. It can be a moment of decision-making because if you plunge us right in there, it's sometimes quite hard to anchor ourselves. And which brings me to number two, the reader needs to care. So if you've got two people engaged in something really intense and you don't know who they are, not only can it be confusing, we don't care, so we need to care about your characters. So this is Indigo Donut, and believe me, we had so many different sort of beginnings. The first beginning I had, it was uh, Bailey and his mate Austin in the classroom, and Indigo's there, and I wanted to set up so many things. Bailey's friendship with Austin, Austin is um, Nigerian Muslim, so I wanted you to know that a Nigerian Muslim is an East End lad with a bit of a mouth on him, he's annoying. Um, I wanted you to know that, that Bailey fancies the pants of Indigo. I wanted you to know that Indigo possibly has got, you know, some trauma and that, but also that she gets picked on at school. It's all a bit much, my like reading group were like, no, no. So they suggested take, start before that. So show us Indigo in her normal situation. Um, so we get to know her. So I went back and I showed her at breakfast in her foster family. So I could bring in a, the element that she's turning 17 and might have to leave this family that she really loves about, that she really loves. And then, ah, oh, actually I can interrupt her breakfast with, with something. And that worked for me, but then my editor said, well, actually it hasn't, it's great. It hasn't quite got the same hook as Orange Boy. So um, rather than starting in the school where I also wanted to show uh, Indigo's uh, rage. Um, I went back even further, which is tip three, you know, ignore the rules that people say these are the rules. So rule that we're often told is mm, no prologues. My editor said, Patrice, write a prologue. So I wrote a short prologue in Indigo Donut, which is meant to be the hook where she's actually going back into a memory or something traumatic that happened to her. And then I could relate that to the first chapter. So you have got that hook. It's an intense moment. It's a memory. There's smells, there's visuals. You're not quite sure what happened, but you know it's not great. It leaves you on a cliffhanger. And then we go into the breakfast scene. So all of those things, you know, where they say, mustn't do that. Explore what's best for your story and go with your gut, not what somebody has told you. Um, and I'm trying to see if I've put that somewhere else as well. I'm also thinking of picture books as well, is I've read quite a lot of picture books. And there's kind of a rule that says, oh, can't do rhyming couplets. I've read loads of rhyming couplets. But what I would suggest when you feel thinking about picture books and rhyming couplets, the reason you're quite often told not to do rhyming couplets is because it's hard for translations and foreign rights, but actually reading lots of rhyming couplets, you just don't do rhyming couplets because it doesn't do your story any good. They have to do be, they have to be done well and been done perhaps originally because what happens is people fall stories into not quite scanning couplets that rhyme so they don't, you know, you could have used so many other words and so many less words if you haven't used rhyming couplets. So think about what the rules there, but actually think about just as what is best for your story. Number four, just make your characters compelling. There's something I tried really hard with, um, 
eight pieces of silver because I really wanted to write a character. I wanted to write a black working class lesbian as a detective. So I wanted to write a mystery. And I think because I'm writing character that's got so many different identities that are slotted into so many stereotypes, I really wanted to avoid that without avoiding her knowledge of what those stereotypes would be. But I also just wanted her to be loud and fun and somebody that you want to, to, to find love and to find her sister. So I love it when, you know, you go and you, onto a page and you read a character and they're both relatable, but they've got tiny detail in there that make them feel entirely authentic, they've got a voice that feels real and their own. So really think about what you're doing with character. Who are they? What are the details of their life? What is special about them? Um, in Orange Boy, because I was writing about a young man, a young black man who gets involved in crime, instantly I thought I need to really make him layered and complex. So I thought about his relationship to his, his dead father, because again, I didn't want the stereotype of an absentee black dad. So I wanted to show there was a love and that he'd inherited not only his dad's vinyl records, but also his dad's love of sci-fi. So there's loads of sort of like uh, Matrix references and um, uh, Star Trek references in there as well. And then number five, which is kind of connected to that, think of the words you use and how, what they say about your character. So yes, Orange Boy and Marlon, I made him a geek. And that means I could use those sci-fi references. In uh, Eight Pieces of Silver, um, I thought about who Silver was. And I thought the thing that with her is her sense of smell, her sensory experience is all tied through smells. And that was deliberate because I read um, in a book that the part of our brain that processes smell is very close to the part of our brain that processes memory. So you know that experience when you smell something and it like takes you back to a place. So for her, it's all about memory and smell and that being like her primary sort of sense. Um, whereas with Bex, she's into Marvel films and Lord of the Rings and K-pop, Korean pop music. And again, so a lot of that floods through her points of reference. So finally, think about the exact words that your characters would use, how they see their world, what they compare things to. They wouldn't compare it to things that, that aren't part of their points of reference. If you've never seen a tower block, you wouldn't compare something to a tower block. But think about their interests and how they would use words. Um, and that's it. Good luck and thank you.